Redshift is the cloud data warehouse offering from AWS. Amazon claims Redshift with a fast, scalable and cost-effective cloud solution to analyze all your data across your data warehouse and data lake. Hello guys, welcome to my channel AWS Learn. One beautiful quote I recently read, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So true, no wonder, learn by doing is the key. Do get involved yourself, like, subscribe and share. Today we will create Amazon Redshift cluster and explore the service. Okay, let's get started. Log in to AWS Management Console and go to the Redshift service. And here you will land up. So go ahead and create the cluster. So if you haven't created the cluster, you will get the same console or same page what I am seeing. So here we'll use free tier right and free tier has its own condition so please read through that but i'll just proceed with creating it because anyway i want to create so these are all configuration which are pre-selected dc2 large one node and we are okay with that and it is going to get the sample data for us and aws user is the admin user i'll just go ahead and uh, use auto generated password and just create cluster right so when i choose free tier i pretty much took all the default setting and let's wait for a couple minutes before we see that redshift cluster is created for it's us ready now it took almost five minutes or so but it's ready so let's get started with exploring options so if you see credentials yeah, these are the credentials and you, you can copy and keep it with you. Okay, and it had loaded sample data. That's what uh, we have seen earlier, right? So first let's explore dashboard and we can see it is total one node on demand instances what you have taken or on, on demand node we have taken. And this is a red shift cluster, which is in available status. So here when you are looking into dashboard, right? You can see cluster overview and more importantly, you can see cluster matrix here. This cluster is just created, so that's not much we have done here. So you won't see all the matrices what is interested to you, but this is just to show like, you will see cluster matrix on the dashboard itself. So let me just select database here, right? And then uh, let's keep this schema as it is, public schema. And this data came as part of our initial load. So I can run some queries here. If you are familiar with uh, SQL, right? You can just you know, run some query like this. So if I run, it should show query result very soon. And after that, we can go back to dashboard or we can go back to query view and see whether we can see the same query there. We can see that these rows are shown on the query editor, right? And that's good. So here I can go to queries and now we can see this particular query was executed and we can see uh, SQL ourselves. And if I go back to editor, right? Then you can see that I have few more options to play with this uh, editor and save queries. For example, I can click on save just give some name to the query test query you can give whatever name you want description i'll just copy paste the value must be at least one character i don't know why it is giving this error okay yeah so just save this query and you will have this query under saved queries we'll see it in a bit right and even you can schedule this query and this is very handy it is same like a scheduler or cron tab if you are familiar with cron tab it is almost like that right and then uh, give the schedule query name you can upload the query it is a big one or it is in uh, some file you can upload it but here uh, i just give select star from users and i can choose when you want it to run so every monday 
every one minute that is what selection but you can be very creative with this like just took hour and then it says repeat every one hour on monday i can choose every day and it will do the same thing every day every one hour so this is very a handy tool to schedule it if you are familiar with cron tab and you just want to go ahead and use the cron tab format you can do it and it is as simple like if you are uh, using it cron tab in your current environment like it is the same thing you can carry over and then use the same format so this query we just ran and you can select which queries you want last 5 minutes like last 15 minutes or last hour all these options are there so historically see the query execution and uh, this is very handy when you are troubleshooting something so we looked at cluster we looked at queries editor and data share is something if you want to share data across uh, redshift clusters you can do it part of the free tier that option is not there when you are using dc2 what we are using as a node type this option does not come with that so you can go into the documentation and see it yourself what are the conditions to use it and if you want to play along with the uh, data share you have to create ra2 which is not part of the free tier right but this is a good feature to know where you can share your data across your account and with different cluster and permissions for the share you can manage it from this particular uh, view so config is again like this is one thing where you have to look into the client tools like what client tools you are using to connect your cluster for example if i choose jdbc and i choose this cluster i want to connect right you can see this is a query string or the url which is created for us and you can copy this url and use it in your application or the way you usually connect to your database right you can use odbc as well as a driver and it will give you that particular url and you can copy that url as well so these are the options for you to connect and you can see that in config page and even you can create endpoints to access cluster that are in another vpc or subnet i will highly recommend you to just create a cluster using free tier and just play along with it just make sure that there are few conditions for us to get a free tier just read through that when you are choosing free tier right right this marketplace these are few tools or third party integrations with redshift there are lot many redshift is a quite a popular service so these are this uh, aws services which can be integrated with redshift and this is third party tools you can use and advisor is quite important and you must know this when uh, you are learning redshift advisor recommendations is something very unique to redshift like it, what it does is it go, gives us recommendation for this workload whatever workload we are running on redshift right so there are multiple factors it looks at when it's giving recommendation your operations it look at your performance your usage of this cluster how much cpus you are using based on that it will recommend you which will be for better operations and optimizing your cost so let me quickly show you aws uh, recommendations what are the recommendations or what are the areas aws redshift advisory or recommendations so you can see it here these are different topics which aws uh, gives us recommendation for update stable statistics or isolate multiple active databases alter sort key on tables alter distribution key on tables these are like um, uh, like uh, quite in depth uh, recommendation it do does give us and it's quite useful so you should be aware that there is something like advisor recommendation which is coming from aws and it is different from trust advisory what aws has a service for it is different than that so this recommendation will be more specific to redshift so alarms you can create alarms and it usually like many services of aws rely on cloudwatch for monitoring and it's same here so you can use cloudwatch and create alarm from here so if i create alarm right i can choose 
what cluster I want to create alarm on. As it is one cluster here, it's quite easy for us. Then you can choose metric, what metrics you want. I want CPU utilization, something like that. And what, how much like greater than 80% name for alarm like test. And then enable notification. I can choose some SNS topic uh, and create alarm. So that's very much possible from this console itself. You need not go to uh, CloudWatch and create alarm there. These are the events, whatever we have done the activity on the cluster, right? So that will be captured in the event. If you see, these are the events which are already there. So this came as part of our deployment. And this is also interesting what's new. So you can see what's happening in the Redshift space. You can see uh, what other features are being added. So this is good way to keep tab of what is happening in Redshift. So let me go back to dashboard. That's it guys. Like once you are done this, make sure you delete the cluster if you do not want to use it. So make sure you do that. Otherwise like you might end up paying for the cluster. So just make sure you delete it. I don't want final snapshot to be created. So that's it. I just want to go ahead and delete it. It's deleting our cluster and soon the cluster will be gone. So make sure you do this. Hope you learned something new. If so, please do me a favor. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Stay connected and keep learning. Thanks again guys for connecting with me today. See you with yet another new topic on AWS. Thanks. Bye for now.